Okay, hey guys. Um, today I'm going to be teaching um, um, basic projectile motion. Um, just um, just before I start the video, I just want to say that there are shortcuts to do these questions really quickly, but it's better if you know how to derive the questions. And you'll know what I'm talking about when I get into it. So um, the question says that an object is projected from the top of a vertical cliff 25 meters above the horizontal ground at an angle alpha where tan alpha equals 3 on 4 with an initial speed of 40 meters a second. And it tells us to take g as 10 meters a second squared. So let me just um, quickly talk about it. Um, what you always want to do first of all is to find the angle. So we're given that tan alpha is equal to 3 on 4 and if we draw the triangle real quick we know that for anything to do with tan it's opposite on adjacent so if we just put that in. So the opposite is equal to 3 and the adjacent is equal to 4. And 3 squared plus 4 squared and you root that it gives you 5 so that's a hypotenuse using Pythagoras theorem. So why I'm doing this, you'll understand in a bit. So first, you just want to get sine alpha, which is opposite on the hypotenuse, and cos alpha, which is um, adjacent on the hypotenuse, so 4 and 5. Okay, so that's the first thing you want to do, and I'll explain why um, afterwards. So horizontal motion. Um, before we get onto the horizontal and vertical motions, what I want to um, clarify is that um, for my notations, I'll be using x and y for horizontal and vertically, vertical respectively, and I'll be using the notations um, with dots on top of them. Uh, x double dot means acceleration. Um, x with just one dot means velocity, and no dot means the displacement. Um, and when you integrate um, acceleration you get velocity and when you integrate velocity you get displacement which you should know. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Um, what, what you need to understand is that when a particle is initially projected there is always an initial, uh, initial vertical velocity and initial horizontal velocity. But before I start that um, I'll get into this. So the acceleration um, horizontally is it's it's zero. You most questions describe air resistance, so you shouldn't worry about that unless it states otherwise. But for now, always take um, the horizontal acceleration as zero. So yeah, that's done. And um, you integrate that to get velocity. So in respect to time, so got the integral sign, um, 0 dt. And since this is an indefinite integral, we um, it's equal to 0 plus c. And this is what I was talking about when I talked about the initial um, horizontal and vertical velocity. Initially, when this is um, projected, there is a vertical velocity and a horizontal velocity. So the vertical velocity is equal to V sine theta, I mean sine alpha, sorry, and the horizontal velocity is equal to V cos alpha. And that's just a, something you should, you should like memorize in your brain. Um, now, um, so yeah. V is equal to the 40, 40 meters a second, which is the what the um, particle is initially projected at, the speed in which it's pro projected at. And this is where um, the sine alpha and cos alpha that we derived was comes comes into play. So if we use, um, if we're trying to find out V cos alpha to do with the horizontal velocity, which we're trying to find out, um, it's just plugging it into your calculator where you just put in 40 times cos alpha which we found out was 4 on 5 so you get 32 
and from that we know that c is equal to 32 therefore x the velocity um, horizontal velocity is equal to 32 now we integrate that again to get the displacement um, for the horizontal motion so integrate that to get x and you get 32t plus c once again because we know it's an in um, indefinite integral alright sorry for that guys um, yeah anyway just really quickly alright so t what we need to know is that t is time so um, if we're trying to find that c what we're going to have to do is um, find out what the x displacement is when t is equal to zero so when t is equal to zero um, the x displacement is zero and I can explain this more easier through a graph so if we're looking at the graph we know that the projectile is here um, and that it is 25 meters high so since it's 25 meters high the um, coordinates would be 0, 25 um, and yeah so from that we know that when the particle initially starts we've got to check where it is on the x on the x-axis and initially the particle is on zero so when x is equal to zero so when x is zero time is also zero so so that means c is basically equal to zero and therefore x is equal to 32t um, and there you go, that's the horizontal motion, so now let's move on to the vertical motion. Um, for the vertical motion, um, it's, it's, it's different, huh? Thanks, thanks, thanks. Sorry for that. Um, for the y acceleration, on the other hand, there is a downwards acceleration acting upon it, which is the force due to gravity. Um, it is, it's always given in the question what g is equal to and for this p particle question we'll be taking gravity as 10 meters a second squared which I wrote there and just to clarify if there's a downwards acceleration acting upon a projectile because um, there is always a downwards acceleration acting upon a project projectile because if there isn't the projectile would just be floating in the air and basically that's impossible not on earth anyway so um, the vertical acceleration is equal to minus 10. It's not 10, it's minus 10 because since it's a downwards acceleration. So we integrate that once again um, in respect to t. And we get um, uh, minus 10 t plus c. And once again, when time is zero um, for the vertical. Um, vertical velocity there is there is a um, vertical velocity as well so when time is equal to zero so v sine alpha that's just 40 times 3 on 5 which is 24 sorry for that so 24 is equal to minus 10 0 plus c. So c is equal to 24. Y dot is equal to minus 10c plus 24. Okay, and now we integrate it once more to get the displacement. So y is equal to minus 10c plus 24 in respect to t. Um, Now, when we're integrating this, it's just minus basic, basic integration. And there you go. Now, this is the tricky part. Now we have to go back to our graph. For the horizontal displacement, we knew that when time is equal to zero, it didn't move anywhere on the x-axis that means it's still at zero but for the y when time is zero it's 25 meters high 
So, um, initially, the y displacement is 25, so 25 is equal to minus 5, and since it's initially there, it's time when time is equal to 0. So that just means c is equal to 25, therefore y is equal to minus 5t squared plus 24t plus 25. And there you go, you have the vertical and the horizontal velocity, I mean, motions. Alright, for, so for this, the question that we're doing, um, we're going to be finding the max height. Um, what we should know is that to find the max height, what you need to do is make the y velocity equal to zero. This is because when the projectile is fired, when it reaches its max height, there's no more vertical velocity acting upon it, and only a horizontal velocity. So, if I show this from this graph, we know that it's going up, 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 and just around this point, it gets to its max height before it falls down again. Um, so let's quickly do that. So our y dot is equal. I always like to put my um, vertical and horizontal velocity somewhere so I know I can refer it to it. So our um, vertical velocity is minus 10t plus 24, and we're going to make that equal to zero, as I stated. So minus 10t plus 24 is equal to zero, so it's just basic uh, um, equations, so 10t is equal to 24, moving it to the other side, and t is equal to 24 on 10, which is the same as 2.4, 2.4 seconds. Sorry, I thought I meant something wrong. <laughs> Alright, so that's the max height. Um, oh, ooh, whoops. Alright, so after doing that, we got the time. This is the amount of time it takes for the particle to reach its max height. But, that's not what the question is asking. The question is asking how high does it get. So to do that, we use the y displacement. And sub the time into that to get the max height. So, um, as I said, I like to put the motions there, so our y displacement is given by um, minus 5t squared plus 24t plus 25, so we just sent sub t is equal to 2.4. So that simply gives you minus 5, 2.4 squared plus 24, 2.4 plus 25, which comes to a total of 53.8 meters. Yeah. Alright. So yeah, that's basically it. If there's any further clarification that you might need, um, just don't hesitate to ask. Thanks for watching.